Hey, I'm Wilson Harwood and I am a studio designer here based in Nashville. And today I'm going to talk all about room ratios and what the optimal room size is for your home recording studio. So if you're banging your head against the wall or driving yourself mad, looking at room ratios, trying to find the best dimensions for your home studio, look no further. This is your lesson on that. Before we dive in, I do have a great resource for you. This is my free soundproofing workshop. It is 45 minutes of in-depth teaching going into how to design and build your home recording studio. So check that out right away at soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. That is soundproofyourstudio.com slash workshop. All right, without further ado, let's jump into this lesson on what is the ideal home recording studio size. All right, so first off, Let's talk about the room ratio paradox, as I'm calling it. Um, and this is something that you've probably experienced if you've done any research on room ratios out there on the internet. And for those of you who don't even know what a room ratio is, basically it's a set of length, width, and height that all relate to each other in a way that creates a room that will sound better. And the reason it'll sound better is because the makeup of the modal distribution in the room, and modes are just uh, the low frequency responses that can have a negative impact on your room, um, it reduces the negative impact. So that is a very simplified description of it, but I want to focus more so on the topic at hand. But if you haven't already, you know, check out about room modes, learn about room ratios, and then you can come back to this video and be like, ah, yes, I get it. So basically here is if you've gone through these room ratios, you know that you're going to hit this threshold of ceiling height. And this is going to happen with every home recording studio because by nature home recording studios are built in smaller spaces than big commercial studios so we don't have the luxury of having super tall ceilings to start with and very large rooms so when you plug in a room ratio into calculate into a calculator like the septmeyer calculator for example and let's say you have a basement studio height of eight feet so if we plug eight feet into the septmeyer ratio calculator you will notice that you're going to get a type A, a type B, and a type C. So these are three different ratios that you could build your room off of, type A being potentially the best and type C being the less desirable option and B being in the middle. And you'll always notice that type A is going to be the smallest room and type C is going to be the largest room. And this is <laughs> always going to be an issue with you. The best solution is always going to take up the most space and that's just the nature of home recording studio design. But you're also going to notice in this example that the final room size here is 9 by 12, which is just over 100 square feet, which is a tiny, tiny room, a little bedroom sized room. And that's before you even put any acoustic panels or acoustic treatment in there, which will shrink it even more. So this is not a good solution for most home recording studios. If you had 9 foot or even 10 foot ceilings, you would get a slightly bigger room, but it still might not be the optimal size for what you want to do in your home recording studio. So rather than focusing on the optimum or ideal room ratios, I would first say, let's learn what are the room ratios to avoid at all costs so that you can actually build your room off of avoiding the worst possible mistakes rather than trying to get the most ideal perfect solution. So when you're building a room of any kind for either listening or home recording studio or mixing, you want to focus on a room that does not have these properties. First and foremost, you do not want to build a studio in a cube or even put a studio inside a cube shaped room. You're going to have such bad acoustics from the very get go that you'll likely be battling them for the entire time that you're using this home studio. Then you also want to avoid rooms that have even multiples of one or two of the other dimensions. So for example, this would be a room that is 10 by 20 by 30, meaning that the 10 multiplied by two is going to be 20 and the 10 multiplied by three is going to be 30. And these are even multiples of each other, which is going to create modal problems in your room. Lastly, you want to avoid simple ratios. These could be ratios of one to two, two to three, or three to four, for example. So say you had a room that was 10 feet wide and 20 feet long, that would be a one to two ratio and you'd want to avoid it. Or 10 feet tall and 20 feet long would also be a room that would have that simple ratio. Now, even taking it six inches longer, six inches shorter can help break up that modal distribution. So now that we know which room ratios to avoid, let's look at one other helpful tool for going a bit further than 
the typical room ratios you might find on the internet from acousticians like Sepmeyer, Loudon, or Bonello. So rather than focusing on these acousticians room ratios, there's a, a designer out of Germany, I believe, um, who has created this helpful calculator called AMROC, A-M-R-O-C. And if you haven't used it already, it's a great resource for digging a little deeper into your specific room ratios. So you can plug in your existing room or maybe the room you wanna build into the AMROC calculator, and it will show you the exact modal distribution of the room. It'll show you things like the Bonello criterion and a bunch of other stuff that I've actually gone over in detail in one of my other videos um, that I'll link right up here in the card and put in the description as, as well. That'll go way more in depth than this video into how to use AMROC and also talk more about this topic of why room ratios are paradoxical. Now, AMROC can be a really helpful tool for maybe saying, let me move my walls six inches this way or one foot this way or try to bring my ceiling height down a few inches and that'll improve the modal distribution a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's still a theoretical calculator and it assumes that our walls are infinitely rigid, meaning something that is not physically possible in the real world. So these calculators have to be used with a grain of salt and this includes the room ratios as well. Mathematically, they make a lot of sense, but in the real world, there are many more variables. And this leads me to my next point. You don't wanna rely heavily on room ratios alone. And this is really stated by Philip Newell, who is a world-renowned studio designer and has written one of the main books on recording studio design called Recording Studio Design uh, version four. And he states in his book that the problem with room ratios is that there's too many variables in home studio construction to rely on room ratios alone. As soon as you start adding materials like stone and drywall and different insulations, everything about the calculations will change. Instead, Philip Newell recommends using a more holistic approach. And this considers the room shape, the construction materials, and the acoustic treatment all as components to help make the room sound better rather than just picking a room dimension and putting yourself in, backing yourself into a corner, metaphorically speaking, that will reduce the utility of the room overall. So in conclusion, here is what I would recommend. First, avoid the bad room ratios that I talked about, meaning the cube-shaped room, the even multiples of different lengths, widths, and height, and then the common ratios or simple ratios like one to two, two to three, or three to four. Use a tool like AMROC, but know its limitations and use it to help you adjust the room slightly or see what the modal makeup of your room could be. But remember to Philip Newell as well and have that holistic approach knowing that the studio design is not just the room ratio alone and don't get hung up on that. I encourage you to focus less on room ratios, especially in the home studio design world, and focus more on a comfortable and realistic room that you will love working in. Remember, at the end of the day, music creation is the goal. So if you're not feeling creative, motivated to use the space, or simply don't have enough space to put a drum kit in and have five people in there jamming out, then the room ratio did nothing for you. All right, so leave any comments or questions that you have about room ratios and some of the experiences you've had with your own design process. I look forward to teaching you more about soundproofing and home recording studio acoustics next week. And make sure to check out that free soundproofing workshop at soundproofyourstudio.com workshop. I'm Wilson Harwood, and I'll see you all next week.